Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I hope you've got a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or are just prepared for a really long video. I decided to play around with some watercolor, and as usual, I couldn't decide on which image to use. I'm using these new um, Spring Has Sprung images from, um, they're drawn by Susie for Simon Says Stamp. This is part of their new release. And they're pre-printed watercolor cards. The images come pre-printed on the smooth side of Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock. So I pulled out three images from the set and I am using my Molito marker that I had filled with the Pebio masking fluid. I already did a separate video um, on that. Gosh, it's been a good couple months now, maybe a bit longer. I can't remember if it's been two or three months, but uh, the marker's still going strong. So that's kind of another update. It still works. Um, the tip gets a little gummy when it sits for too long, but I just like pull off those little bits that get a little gummy and am able to use it like I was before. So I masked off just the edges of all these um, like characters and everything. I just went along the edges um, just to make it easier to do uh, the background so that I didn't have to sit and like take so much time to, you know, not go over the edges onto, you know, the flowers or the um, bunnies or anything like that. So I masked off all those edges and then I taped down everything with painter's tape. Since I didn't have a big enough um, board, I used my Epicurean cutting board for this image. And then I am using my Artist Loft watercolors for this image. I decided while I was doing it too, I was like, you know what, let's do three different types of watercolor just because I can. I'm not um, doing this to say which one is better than the others. I think they're all actually great. They just have different characteristics and I'm also, I'm not an artist per se, like I don't have an art background, or anything like that. I just have my own little experience and I like to color. So I like all three, honestly. So anyway, I'll get into each one separately. But for the first one, I'm using the Artist Loft watercolors, which I got at Michael's. You can get similar ones online. I will have links to like pretty much the exact same ones. I'm sure they probably make them in a warehouse somewhere and then they just brand them for whatever brand. But you can get them for between four and seven dollars roughly. Um really cheap like obviously they're full of fillers you're not going to achieve true transparency with them but they're a great little set and I enjoy them they're fun so I did the background on the first one with the artist loft and then for my second one I'm using my peerless watercolors which I haven't pulled out in a really long time if you go through some of my old videos though I've used these several times I've done a video on how I created this little palette they're just pieces of the Peerless um, adhered to watercolor paper. Um, if you're not familiar with Peerless, they're basically super, super concentrated pigments that are attached to pieces of paper. Um, so you can pick up the color directly. You can also cut little tiny pieces and um, put them in little pots of water and create transparent watercolors that way, like whatever floats your boat. Um, these are awesome. I don't use them that often just because I've been having fun playing with everything else. Uh, but I have had my sets for, gosh, eight years, nine years. I can't even tell you how long I've had them. Um, they last forever as long as they're kept in a dry place because obviously if moisture gets into these, it will destroy them. But yeah, I really like these. The colors are so vibrant. So for this, that second background there, I just wet each area with the brush and then picked up the peerless and applied it directly that way. And by the way, I'm using the new to me. This is the silver size six brush. Um, I got, I have the four, the two, the four and the six. And for all of this, all three images for every part of it, I just stuck with the size six. The one thing I'm really loving about these brushes is um, the tip comes to such a fine detailed point. So I was able to do the whole thing with just the one brush. So for my third um, image, I'm using the Kiritaki Zig Gonsai Tombi palette and uh got the blue i chose that pale blue that comes in the big 36 set because i love it and i just use the plastic insert that comes with the watercolor palette and i use that as my like palette so did that one and then when everything was dry which didn't take very long i'm removing all of that masking fluid you can rub it with your finger you can use um an adhesive remover eraser i just like to use this micro fine cloth your microfiber cloth it picks up that 
um, masking fluid really, really well. Um, I have put the cloth through the wash just to see if I can kind of remove because it does, it gums up the cloth really badly. Um, it does go through the wash. It kind of removes some of it, but over time the, it's going to destroy that cloth, but the cloth was cheap and I'm sure I'm going to get like a good year or two's use out of it before I have to get a different one. So removed all the masking fluid and now I'm back to my original image and I'm using the same Artist Loft watercolors and I just like to use the lid as my little palette because it has all the um, wells basically in it. So I just use kind of the coordinating wells for the colors and experimenting here I've never I haven't done much mixing with um, these colors. I usually just use the color as is and I find you can kind of mix the colors a little bit, um, colors that are kind of same or shades of the same color basically. Because these are full of fillers, it gets really muddy really quickly. Um, so you don't have as many creative options and they do have a chalky finish. Like you can actually, when they're completely dry, like you can rub your fingers on the image and some of the color will basically come off. Like you can just feel the chalky residue. But again, for four to $7, um, that you that's pretty much what you're gonna get you're just you're getting a bunch of fillers and not a whole lot of pigment but for us paper crafters honestly I think it's a great little set it's fun and you get such a big variety of colors there's so many like really fun bright colors like that bright pink and there's like the aqua colors and I just I really like it I got a couple sets for my kids and a set for me and I've done I did a review video on this I've done some stamping with these watercolors and yeah, I really like them. I just have fun with them and I feel like there's no pressure with these to be really good at it. You know, I'm not using an artist grade watercolor. So, you know, I have to be some fabulous artist or anything else. Like I'm just coloring with my $4 set of watercolors. The brush was more expensive than the watercolors, honestly. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I get whatever floats your boat. But if you, you know, you've never at all watercolored in your life and you're kind of curious, pick up a set and try it. It's fun. It really is. So I just did each section and then let it dry before going on to um, any area that was like touching or else I kind of see, you can see I'm kind of skipping around here and there um, just so that nothing really runs in. With these, I find they dry quite quickly, but I also wasn't like, I was pretty much picking up the color and applying it directly to the paper. I wasn't getting it wet. I'm just doing my thing. Like I'm basically just filling them in with color. So I did a light gray for the bunny and one thing I was discovering as I was doing this rather than picking up clean water with my brush to um, activate the watercolors I was just spraying it with my distress distress sprayer like spraying directly onto the pans of watercolor so much faster that way so much easier <laughs> saves me from having to constantly keep cleaning my brush so I um watercolored everything in it didn't really take me that long I just kind of sat and enjoyed it and then at the very end I added a little bit of pink to the bunny's cheeks and then I set that aside to dry and then I moved on to the peerless one so same thing removed all the masking fluid and then with this I did the same did the same technique that I did to do the background is I got the image or the area I wanted to watercolor wet with clean water first and then started picking up the color directly from the little piece of peerless paper and I ended up doing this entire um, little scene here using I think this is this palette that I've created is from just the basic peerless pack in fact I'm positive it is so this one pack has all these colors it's awesome um, really you can't go wrong with peerless there I think they are a very affordable price for what you get and how much color you get like the sheets are quite large and then there's those little bonus packs you can get that have tons more colors like I have quite a few I have a stack of all my peerless colors and again they're just they're so unique I've never seen anything like them they're so much fun to play with um, I highly recommend them if you don't have them I highly recommend them because at the very least you don't need to be again you don't need to be an artist you know and be layering colors and doing all these fancy techniques 99% of the time with these I'm literally just picking up some color and coloring in an image like it, it can't get any simpler than that um, that's basically what I did with all of these other than the little in interiors of the ears there where I layered two colors together all of this image is done with just one color per item so the bunnies were done with one color, even their little center, like their tummies, I just did with the same color. I just used more water. And then the balloons were each one color. 
And I did, you can see I did balloons that weren't touching and then let them dry before I went and did the other balloons so that the colors aren't seeping into each other. So I was letting them dry and then I did the ground. I know the ground, I did two shades of green. So added a little bit of a darker green there and then went back in and kept wetting um, each balloon I was working on with just clean water. And this was the only spot I didn't, it wasn't that the blue wasn't dry, but I was not paying attention to where my brush was and I ran the red a little bit into the blue balloon which you see a little bit at the end but I just went with it I was having fun and my head gets in the way a little bit here I was just kind of zoning out and coloring and I did these over the space of two days multiple sittings just as I had a little bit of time late at night after the kids are in bed um was able to finish them today while you know, miracle of miracles. My youngest two um, had a nap at the same time, which almost never happens. So I was able to sit down and finish these cards, which was really fun. <laughs> so same thing with the Peerless. Um, let it dry. That's when I went off and did something. And then I covered it with some scrap paper here because that's the last thing I wanted to do was mess it up since it was taped to the same board as this image. So I covered it with scrap paper and then got my Gonsai Tombi watercolors out again to do this image. And kind of like I did kind of both techniques how I did the first one I was picking up the color directly and then applying it to the image and then the peerless I was getting it wet with clean water and then um, adding the color in with the Gonsai Tambi I kind of did the same thing as both or sorry I basically did both techniques like I would get the area wet with water and then pick up some of the watercolor or else and, and then in some areas I was just picking up the color and applying it directly I'm I was literally just having fun like no techniques in mind no real anything to teach you guys I guess in a way I was just enjoying myself <laughs> so I did the bunnies and did a little bit of layering just to kind of see what I could um what kind of looks I could get so that's how I kind of got that modeled look to them is I just I did about two really only like two layers of color and another side note not about the guns I but about these brushes um I really really like the silver brushes so far um, compared to the cheaper brushes I've used, there is a huge difference in quality. Um, the one thing I really noticed, which you don't really know until you use brushes on a regular basis, um, these ones being the higher quality, they really soak up a lot of color and hold a lot of color, meaning you don't need to keep dipping into your watercolor palette. Um, it's just amazing. I didn't really start, start noticing that till around about this exact point. And I could just keep going and going and going with this purple. And it's like, it's not running out. Like there's so much color in the brush. So that is one of the nice things. But this is something I tell people again, you do not need super expensive brushes either. My little set of Ranger brushes has been awesome. I still reach for them on a regular basis. Um, these obviously are kind of taking place of that because I really like them. But I've used my Ranger brushes for a very long time I've had them for oh, a good couple years now maybe longer and it's around ten dollars for a pack of I'm not sure how many come in the pack like what six brushes and they're great they are great little brushes like again if you are not um, familiar with watercoloring or not sure you're gonna like it or just are just unsure you know and you have no artistic background you know just like me get a cheap set of water of brushes like the ranger set and you know some artist off watercolors or whatever is going to float your boat and just play it's so much fun so that's what i did and then the more i'm doing it and the more i'm enjoying it and really just fully enjoying it i'm getting you know here and there getting another set of watercolors or getting nicer brushes you know it just whatever your passion is whatever floats your boat like i like to say <laughs> so anywho um yeah I use that same size six brush for all these images, even for these fine little detail areas, because it comes to such a fine point. You can get right into tiny, tiny little areas with this brush. So that's part of it too, is you can get like one brush, like this number six, I would recommend. If you were only to get one of these silver black velvet brushes, you know, you didn't know which one to get, get the number six. You can do, I did all the backgrounds with it. You can do fine details with it is great. You don't need to have like a two, a four, a six, an eight, you know, unless you're like me and you need to have all the things in all the colors, in all the sizes. Anyway, so once everything was completely dry, I hit them all with my heat tool a little bit, just it warms up the adhesive on the tape. So I'm able to peel 
all the tape off with next to no um, peeling of the watercolor paper. And then to finish these cards, I kept them simple because these are all A2 size. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I've got three pieces of heavyweight white cardstock that I cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches and scored them all at five and a half. So they will be top folding A2 sized note cards. And for my first card, I just use my blueprints one and two dynamics from my favorite things. I use the blueprints one to cut the watercolor panel. And then Blueprints 2 to cut this pattern paper. This is from a doodle bug. This is the Hello Sunshine pack. I still have it. I think I got it a year or two ago. I can't even remember. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. But it's still available. Really cute. Really, really cute. So I die cut the pattern paper and just use that to frame the image. And then once I was done that, I was like, I need to add some Wink of Stella. So I grabbed my clear Wink of Stella. And... Being watercolor, obviously, it completely reactivates the watercolors. So I, you can see I scribble it off between the colors I'm applying it to on the scratch paper. And it also will, being watercolor, it moves. It's reactivating and moving around the color. And then I just turned on my cell phone, the flashlight on my cell phone, so you can see the shimmer it gives. Like, it's so pretty. And it's so hard to capture, not really on video and in pictures. But gorgeous shimmer. So... Of course, I couldn't leave well enough alone, so I had to add more to the second image. So to, I did it to all the balloons, and between each color, scribbled it off. And then I pulled out something I haven't used in eons. I honestly can't remember the last time, but I pulled out some liquid applique and applied it to just their little tails. And you can use li liquid applique in one of two ways. You can set it aside to air dry, like overnight, it takes quite a while. Or you can heat it immediately. And for this, I heated it immediately. And when you heat it immediately, you get this sort of effect. And it just kind of bubbles up and looks kind of lumpy, which is exactly what I wanted with their tails. If you want a more smooth, um, puffy look, that's where you let it dry overnight and then hit it with your heat tool. So did that so they've got you know shimmery little balloons and puffy little tails and this one I just applied straight onto the card so it's just the card four and a quarter by five and a half no other embellishments and then for the last one I had I totally spaced I was in the zone and didn't realize I was still totally zoomed in here so I apologize for that um, I had this little scrap of floral paper from that same pack so I adhered it to the front of the card and just trimmed off the excess and then I trimmed down just the sides of this watercolor panel so it was basically a little under four inches by um, the five and a quarter and or five and a half sorry and then I cut a little slit with my craft knife right in the top spine of the card there where the pattern paper was and then I adhered the watercolored piece and then I had put some purple baker's twine around or like through that hole I'd cut in the spine and just two lengths of it and then I tied that in a bow and trimmed off the tails and that's it. So if you're still watching after all of this and listening to me, um, if you're interested in any of the supplies used or checking out these pictures like in person or whatever, um, check out my blog post which will be linked directly below the video as well as a link to all the supplies used. All that info will be in the description box below the video. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping my videos and I will hopefully see you all very soon in the next one. Bye!